central bank actually getting orthodoxy and raising rates aggressively, more aggressive than most of us thought they would, uh, and that uncovering a web of dumb leverage, fraudulent activity, stupid activity, some combination of bad behavior and dumb behavior, uh, which I think led us to, you know, a December low with tax law selling complete. You know, when we talk about blood on the streets, it was just painful to talk crypto. Uh, and so if you had to sell, you sold. If you were leveraged, you got out of your leverage. I said before the market was pretty clean. Now we've had a 30% bounce and ha, it feels, you know, it's got to be a little careful. Uh, that's a lot of short covering. It's some new money. It's funny, we've seen the crypto hedge funds for the most part were decimated. And again, you do the math, you're down 80% last year and you're up 20 this year, you're still down 76 from the high. Uh, you know, it's very hard to dig out of a big hole. You launched Galaxy at the peak of the prior bull market and you had to deal with this. And, and here it is again. How does it feel different this time than last time? Yeah, it feels a little worse, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I think of Galaxy, when we launched, we really didn't have any business. We thought we were gonna build a business and it was really difficult to. So for the first couple of years, we, we really did very little other than trade our own portfolio. Um, it was a smaller portfolio, it was easier to hedge. Uh, we did a great job in 2017 or 2018 of preserving, preserving capital. Uh, I learned a lesson there, which I didn't wanna forget this time. You know, the first 70% down in that market, we hadn't lost a penny of book. And I, that was, a bit of luck, a bit of genius, a bit of uh, you know, aggressive hedging. Um, but I felt I should like walk around and strut and like, you know, get a wax statue of myself. <laughs> and then by the end of the year, we were down 30%. I was like, how did that happen? Well, a market down 95% is down 70 and then 70, right? And so we scaled in and, and, and getting in early can crush you, right? Uh, so if you just look at great shorters, they don't matter where they short the thing from, because if it's going to zero, it's an 80% return or a 78% return, even if you miss by 30%, right? Uh, I, I do a great trick to young traders when I show them the NASDAQ bubble in 2000. If you pick the ultimate top or you sold it down 28%, on the lows, your return is almost identical. It's off by 4% because you're selling the same notional amount. Well, the opposite happens for buying. And so buying, you've got to be very precious of trying to make sure you're close to the low uh, and not scale all the way down because you're buying in notional dollars or do it in tokens. I mean, I got surprised. I knew rates were going to go up and I knew there was going to be inflation, but that second leg that came after Russia kind of took everybody's surprise and the central banks went further, so liquidity got really withdrawn. It's complicated, right? I, I'm like you, I'm kind of more of a deflationist and I think over time it probably comes lower but there's this other distinct probability that things come back too fast and we create inflation again so I'm not sure how much rates come down sure the 10 year can come down a bit in the meantime as growth comes down but do rates come down a lot or do they do they cut them down to three and then they get stuck at I think a lot of people aren't talking about what does GDP look like on the other side of this recession I think it's probably slow because if you say if the, if the Fed keep relatively tight, the economy's slow, and that's a different world to deal with. It's not as easy. So, talking about what happened last year, I want to get to the structure of the markets now in crypto. It really reminded me of long-term capital, where we found that was one player. You know, basically that you know Barry's trust spreads blew out, which was like the swap spreads when long-term capital blew out. Three Arrows Capital were the long-term capital. They were everybody's biggest client. And then lo and behold, everybody went bust. It's like, I've seen this playbook before. Interesting enough, the hedge fund industry, after LTCM, as you know, everyone was like, it's uninvestable. They're over-levered, it's opaque. What happened is the assets under management went up 5X because of regulation and everyone tightened up risk. But it felt like we just, we've seen this playbook before you and I many times over. It's not unique to crypto, right? Yeah, which is, which is unfortunate is crypto had this story of transparency. I must have used the word 10,000 times in the last five years when I was talking about crypto. Transparency, egalitarian, fairness. And we had really 
big, giant, opaque players. But you think about Celsius, crazy leverage, crazy leverage. BlockFi, crazy leverage, right? Genesis, crazy leverage, crazy concentration risk. Uh, three Arrows, bizarre. Credit, credit groups like ours make decisions to lend people money based on balance sheets. And, and you don't go off like kamikaze saying, I'm just lending the money, hoping that most of that gets, well, I, I know most of it's been washed out of the market, that it gets resolved sometime over the next 18 months. Uh, those, it, it weighs heavy on illiquid assets, right? Because all these places have illiquid assets. They sell the liquid stuff. And so that stuff just gets disposed or held or pushed around.